What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be showing you the new improved method thanks to Sega RPG Fan on how to get your Sega Saturn online and you're definitely going to need that Netlink modem so you're going to have to be looking at uh, eBay listings to get one of those. But uh, what this is over here, this is a Raspberry Pi with not only the Netlink tunneling software into it but also the Dream Pi software. So I can use this to get online with my Dreamcast as well. So there's actually two methods to get this working. One that requires everything here. You need the Raspberry Pi, the Ethernet cable, the RJ11 telephone cable, and this. And what this is, is a USB modem with a built-in line voltage inducer. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can see where to, exactly to get this because both methods require using this. If you want to just get online using your PC, you don't need the Raspberry Pi. You just need the telephone cable and the USB modem. So I'm gonna bring you guys to my computer and I will show you how to get online with both of these methods. So to play these games online with these methods, you actually can't use your original discs if you have them or even, regardless if they're burn disc or what, you can't use the original discs. What you have to do is go to this website, saturn.dreampipe.net and here is where you can get modified patched image files for all the games they have all the Japanese games and all the American Netlink games. So you're gonna have to download these games whether you have a Satiator or a Fenrir or maybe you're just burning discs, you're using the swap trick or maybe you have a modded Saturn that can read burn discs. Either way, these are where you get the image files in order to do this. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to dial people on the American games and how to dial people on the Japanese game. So this is the American Netlink interface that I got here. So we go to dial and the first thing you want to do is put a number sign and we're going to use just as an example we're going to use the IP address 65.123.148.15. So so for 65 before you put in just 65 you have to put in a zero and then 65. So and these are these go in uh, three digit brackets so 65 is going to be 065, and then 123 is fine the way it is, and then 148 is fine the way it is. But dot 15, you have to put 015. And then you put another number sign, and then you are ready to dial. So, and make sure that when you are dialing each other's IP addresses, that you're you're going on google you're typing in what's my ip and that is how you find out what your public ip address is don't go into like the command prompt and type in you know ip config and type in like that ip address that's not the same thing you got to go into google type what's my ip and that will tell you what your public ip address is and this is the information that you have to share with each other so i'm going to go switch over to the japanese games because it's a little bit different how you got to do it Okay, so for the Japanese games, if you are on the waiting side, you have to make your name SP. And you'll notice, you, you might notice that A and C is like reversed on the Japanese games. So like even though A is select on the American Netlink games, C is actually select. So you wanna make sure that C right here, I just made a space. You do not wanna have this space right here. So if I, if I press B, it will cancel that space out and now I can press OK. So if you have like a space like here, there it is another space. If I have a space anywhere before or after the SP, you're going to get an error that says something about a demo build. So just make sure that uh, you don't have a space anywhere in this name and then just press OK. So this is for the waiting side. OK, so now if you're dialing another player and you have their IP address, what you have to do is type M. Oh, wait, see, I did it right there. I pressed A. Don't press A because that makes a space and that can ruin everything. Press B. C is the is kind of like the A button here. So M, P, and then number. And we'll use the same example, the, uh, the same IP address I used before. So we got to do zero. 65, 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 8, 0, 1, 5, and then put the number sign, and then press OK. Now, 
Now, regardless if you're dialing or waiting, you'll you'll get returned to a screen that says this. So you, this is when you want to press challenge. So when you press challenge and you're waiting, it'll go into a waiting mode. Um, when you press challenge and you're dialing, that's when you start to dial. So you'll get this message, just press yes. And it should bring you right here. And now I am dialing right now. So if you press challenge and you press yes, and it gives you an error saying something about a demo build, that means you have a space somewhere in the, the name and that's what's messing it up. So make sure that you ha don't have those spaces. It's a very common problem. So that's why I keep kind of repeating myself with that. All right, so regardless if you're doing the PC tunnel method or the DreamPi method, you're going to have to do some port forwarding. So you're going to want to type in this address into your web browser and it will it should take you to your like the home page of your router. And you're going to need to know the password of your router too. And which sometimes is usually just uh, like in the back of the router that you bought. And you know, this looks different for everybody because I'm doing Fios by Verizon. So every user interface is different depending on what your ISP is, but you're gonna wanna find a section that mentions port forwarding. And right here are the ports that you will need to forward. You will need to port, port forward TCP 65432, UDP 20,001, UDP, 20,002 and the IP that you are port forwarding this to is either going to be the IP address of your DreamPi or the IP address of your PC. Okay, so later on in the video, I will show you how to get the IP address of your DreamPi. It'll be a timestamp in the description, but real quick, how to get the IP address of your PC, the one that you're gonna wanna port forward to if you're using just the PC method, you're gonna wanna go down to your run window and go to the command prompt and just type in IP config and you should see your IPv4 address. That is the IP address of your computer and that is where you're going to port forward, um, you know, 65, 44, 32, and 20,001, and 20,002. Okay, so you're going to need to download Python 2.7.0. There are newer versions of Python, but this is the version that you're going to need to get this working. And uh, once you get to this link, which I will put the link in the description, just scroll down to uh, the 64-bit installer and uh or, or the 32-bit installer if you have a 32-bit computer but uh the next thing you need to do is go get something called pi serial and uh, i'll put the link again in the description so once you download this and you download the python 2.7 you're going to want to uh, run the installer i already did this so i'm not going to do it again but once, you, once that's finished installing, what you need to do is now uh, extract Pi Serial 3.5. Well, before you do that, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna copy it and put it in the Python 27 folder, which I recommend you just put this folder in your your basic like C drive path. Don't, I mean, you can you can do C users, admin, you, you know, you can you can go a longer path if you want, but just to make things a little simpler, just put it in your C drive. So let's paste the Pi serial, let's extract it here, and you'll see something called, uh, there it is, Pi serial. So what you're gonna do here now is just copy all this stuff and paste it in the folder. Uh, skip file, that's the license.txt, doesn't matter. Okay, you can delete this folder now if you want to. Okay, so now that you have all this here, what you want to do is go to your run window and type in environmental uh, variables. Edit the system environmental variables. So what you want to do is go down here to environment variables and you'll see uh, a user variable and then system variable. Go down here to this, this uh, box and go to path and click edit and we're gonna make a new path we're gonna call it c slash python 27 because this is the i mean you got to do the path that you put this uh you installed it to 
So if you did C users admin or C users and then like the name of your PC, do it there. But for this example, I said to just do this the basic C path just to make it easy. So press enter there and then uh, make another one and then make this one C Python 27 slash scripts with a capital S enter. Okay. So now you can press okay, okay, okay. All right, so the next thing you want to do is go open your command prompt. And the path here, again, you have to go to the path that you installed Python to. So for me, I, I, I install it to the basic uh, C drive path. So we're gonna type in CD and then slash. And now that brings us to the proper folder. Uh, go to now CD Python 27 to go to your Python folder and you're going to want to type in call Python setup.py install because since you extracted the pi serial here you should see there's setup.py here so this is how you like execute this and kind of install it so press enter and you're good to go you should see all this that should that should be very good and you should be all set up now and now you should be ready to go to the next step all right guys so this is where you get the pc tunnel software i have this link in the description and this is basically sega rpg fans github so regardless if this you're watching this video like six months from now or a year from now uh, these will probably be updated. Maybe you'll see like a 4.3 or 4.4 or maybe version 5. Just make sure that the person that you're connecting with, you both have the same versions. So right now we're doing 4.2. Download the Netlink tunnel. And let's extract it. Okay. So before we go any further, I, what I need you guys to do is type in device manager and make sure that your USB modem is plugged into your computer. So you need to find your USB modem here. For me, it was under modems. What you need to do is find it, right click on it, go to properties and then click modem up here and you'll see the port. So mine's COM5, like it's important that we remember that it's COM5 for me but uh, your number might be different. Okay, so right now this folder is actually missing a .bat file. Maybe in future updates, the .bat file will be included, but if it's not there, what you need to do is make a text file and call it tunnel and change the extension from .text to .bat. Make sure that your computer can show extensions and that you're able to change the extensions. Okay, real quick, I'm actually adding this in post because I just said, hey, make sure your computer can, you know, see hidden extensions. I might as well walk you through that real quick uh, because usually computers by default don't have that. So just go to your run window and type in file explorer options. And once you open that, press view. And you will see down here it says hide extensions for known file types. This is probably, you probably have a check mark on this by default. So just make sure you uncheck that and press apply and okay. And now you should be able to change extensions within the file name. Okay, so now let's edit the .bat file. And what you need to type is this, call python tunnel.py. For me, it's com5 and then pause. So definitely make sure that you looked at device manager and you put the right number for your setup and then just save it. So as you know, with the Netlink, you either dial another player or you wait for another player to call you. So we're gonna, I'm gonna run you through both of these scenarios. So right now we're gonna do a situation where I am dialing another player. So right now, just run the .bat file. All right, so here we have the USB modem plugged into the computer. And this is the telephone cord that goes into the line port of the Netlink. You don't have to put it up here up top. And uh, obviously this needs to be plugged into your Sega Saturn. 
So when you first uh, connect it, you'll see one light, that's fine. But when you guys are starting to connect with each other, and when you make a successful connection, you should see two green lights pop up. And we're gonna be using Duke Nukem 3D as an example. Just uh, make sure that your Netlink modem is plugged into your system when you put in this CD or run the, the game from your Satiator or Fenrir or whatever you're doing with your modded Saturns. Go to Quick Link. This message seems to pop up every time, regardless if you have a keyboard plugged in or not. Just click Quick Link. And, you know, with that program running, just press Dial, and you really should be good to go. You'll see... Uh, some text pop up that's just a good way to know that it's working and yeah I mean this should just work straight up okay so now I'm gonna run you through the scenario where you're waiting for a call because it is a little bit different you want to run the program you want to press wait and as you go into waiting you should see some text appear and you wanna wait until a certain text that says ATA to appear, and that's when you can have your friend dial you. Okay, now it says ATA, that's when I would message my friend on Discord or on the phone or whatever, that's when I would say, okay, now it's time to dial me. You don't want them to dial you before it says ATA. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is get the DreamPie software. Go to dreamcastlive.net Go to the download sections and download the DreamPie software. And once you have that, you can go to this website, Bellina Etcher, uh, what is it, Bellina.io slash Etcher. Just type in Bellina Etcher in Google and it'll take you right here. And this is a great website that you can use to image the DreamPie software right onto the SD card. So you gotta take the SD card out of your DreamPie and uh, put it in your computer and it's not just a simple copy and paste situation you have to use this software so to find the ip address of your dream pie what you need to do is plug in the power to it and then put an hdmi cable into it and on your tv screen once all this text is finished loading you should see somewhere towards the bottom the ip address of your dream pie it should just say it and this is something you'll sometimes have to be on the lookout for. Sometimes your router will actually change the IP address of your DreamPie. Uh, there is a way to set a static IP address to this, which I will put a link in the description to it if you want to do that. Okay, so for this next step, this will actually require your DreamPie to be connected to the internet. So make sure your DreamPie is plugged in, the power is plugged in, and just take your internet cord and plug it into the side. And we're ready to go to the next step. I have this link in the description and this is basically Sega RPG fans GitHub. So regardless if this you're watching this video like six months from now or a year from now, uh, these will probably be updated. Maybe you'll see like a 4.3 or 4.4 or maybe version five. Just make sure that the person that you're connecting with, you both have the same versions. So right now we're doing 4.2, download the Netlink tunnel. Okay, so for this next step, it was really required that you had your internet cable plugged into your Raspberry Pi that now has the DreamPi software loaded onto it. So first thing we're gonna do is open this readme and we can put that in the back for now. But what we want to do is take this um, Netlink Tunnel folder, actually the whole folder, and copy it. So just copy that for now. And uh, next thing you want to do is go down to the Run window and type in PowerShell. Not the command prompt, definitely PowerShell. So for me, uh, what it looks like for me is C Users Al 10. That's the name of this PC. Um, so what you need to do now is go to C users and you know whatever 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 uh, path that it says here you need to go to that path and I have mine right here C users Al 10 copy the folder 
Uh, well, I already copied it and I changed the name to V4.2. So I recommend you change the name to V4.2. It really doesn't matter what you change it to, but I'm just trying to make it simpler. You could change it to V, honestly, if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Um, but for this uh, example, we're going to do V4.2. So now that you've done that, you've put the folder in the right place. You can get rid of that. Go back to PowerShell and type in CD and then... You know, if you used as the example v4.2, then do that. cd v4.2. So now we've just kind of changed directory right there. And let's go back to that readme. And you'll notice that there is a command. We're going to copy this command. And we, because what we're doing here is we're, we're putting the netlink.py file from that folder onto the DreamPy, and we need to do the same thing with the DreamPy.py file that's in that folder. So let's go here, paste it, press enter, and it's gonna ask for your password, which is just raspberry in lowercase. It's normal if you don't see anything come up, but just you know remember that it's there. Type raspberry, press enter, and it should work 100%, we're all good. Now copy it again, I mean paste it again, Go back to netlink.py, change it to dreampy.py, press enter, type in raspberry, the password, and press enter again, and 100%, it's all good. Now your dreampy is now not only compatible with Dream, Dreamcast games, but now you have the tunneling, the Saturn tunneling software loaded onto it, and it's 100% ready to go. Okay, so I got my Dream Pi, got the power plugged in, I got the USB modem plugged in, the telephone cable is going into the Saturn modem, and uh, everything's good, this is all set up. I just wanna point out that you'll notice that there are two lights on here, so this is very important. If you uh, ever see a situation where this is just, you know, you have everything set up, you have everything plugged in, and you're only getting one light, don't bother trying to dial or wait for a call or anything. It's something's not right with your setup. Um, sometimes if you're troubleshooting, if you're like having trouble connecting with somebody, maybe when you instantly try to connect to somebody, it'll go from two lights to one light for like a second and then it goes back to two lights. That happens sometimes, that's not a big deal. But the point I'm getting at is, if you don't hook everything up here, I mean, not that this needs to even be plugged into the modem, this, these two lights just mean that basically there's internet going to this Dream Pie and that it's internet ready. So yeah, just make sure that you see two lights before you ever try to dial somebody or wait for a call. All right, so I just plugged everything in. So I got one light. Uh, you just gotta give it some time when you first plug everything in and that light should, uh, that second light should turn on. There it is. Okay, so that's ready to go. So. That's it for the video. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the description to the Sega Saturn Shiro Discord. That is where there's a lot of people uh, connecting with each other and scheduling matches. And we actually have tournaments now. And uh, I'll also put my name in the description, my Discord name, because uh, if you have any problems, I mean, you can either go to the Discord or you can even direct message me. If you need help testing anything, I can help you. And uh, anybody in the Sega Saturn and Shiro Discord will also help you. Everyone's really nice there. So that's it for the video, and uh, I'll see you online.